do live stream. So if you are catching this on the replay, make sure that you hit the uh, like and subscribe button if you're not already. Um, I'm going to be going over a bunch of fragrances today, but um, yeah, today is the kind of uh, belated 8,000 subscriber live stream because I had a few other live streams I had to get over with before we did this one. I was doing one last week with Jeff from SoCal Scents where we did our top five uh, spring fragrances. And so if you guys want to check that out, feel free. And I was supposed to be doing a live stream with uh, Ross and Dedrick from um, TLTG and Dedrick Hicks Jr.'s channel. Um, and there still might be tomorrow, but if not, it's going to be pushed till next week because not all of the packages have arrived. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let me, my daughter's phone is still on her channel, so give me one second while I get to mine so I can see what you guys are saying. Give me one second. Your channel, and also today, I've got a brand new fragrance in. I'm wearing M. Mikalif, and this is GN Tonic, or Gin Tonic, and it's really nice. I'll talk to you guys about that in a second, though. Uh, what's going on, Jafar? Let's go, man. Hey, six months. Congratulations. If you guys don't already know, um, if you want to become a member of the channel to support the channel, um, there are certain tiers. I know I'm a smaller channel, but uh, we have a few members, and if we get more in the higher tiers, then obviously we'll do some giveaways, but I know I'm a smaller channel. It was just, I was trying to test it out and see what's going on, but congratulations, Jafar, on... Uh, Six months. I got to make you a new emoji. I keep forgetting about that. But yeah, so let me know what your scent of the day is today if you're just arriving. Again, GN Tonic. I just got this in today. The bottle is sweet. I'm going to be doing a review on this uh, pretty damn soon. Um, but it's all glass. It has this almost like glass encrusted tile uh, going across the whole thing. And then even the cap is almost like this porcelain. It's a really nice. I didn't really look at the atomizer. Atomizer is great. It's not pressurized or anything, but uh, it has really good dispersal. But if you want to know what this fragrance smells like, so when I sprayed it on this morning, uh, when I first sprayed it, when it first got here, I sprayed it one time in my hand, and I don't know if there was just it was in the atomizer or what was going on because it kind of smelled a bit sharp and funky to me. Um, and everybody was like, "No, I really like this fragrance. Like you should try it out again." maybe tomorrow or whatever. So what I did was I was already out gardening. So I took a shower, came back in, sprayed it on again. And it was just something about the first original spray in the atomizer. It just wasn't doing anything. And it smelled completely different than when I sprayed it even right now. Um, but I have it all. I'm wearing it all day. Uh, G and tonic. It kind of smells like a mix of three different fragrances. It smells almost like if you mix together Lacoste Blanc Eau Fraiche with the turmeric from the Intense, which to the turmeric in the Intense kind of just smells like a sharper ginger. Um, it's like crisper, sharper, and that is what you get in this one. Um, it's like a nice ginger mixture with a nice lime out top, which kind of reminds me of Bohemian lime. So you mix those three fragrances together with like a touch of Virgin Island water. It smells uh, not really necessarily like a gin and tonic. It doesn't have like a huge boozy tone or anything, but um, it has a nice green aspect to it, some citrus, a nice ginger floating on the top. It's actually really nice, fresh, clean spring fragrance. I think I rated it just based off opening sprays between like an 8 and an 8.2. Um, and I, I probably going to just go up from there. My wife really likes it. So, yeah, it's a really nice fragrance. Uh, what's up, Nigel? How you doing, man? Uh, Chris, what's going on? Ola Randy, my dear Ohm Sport arrived today, so send of the day. Is it the Dior Ohm Sport original or the 2021 version? Because the 2021 version is my favorite Dior. Uh, always has been since it came out. So, what, three years now? Almost. Uh, 2021. So, yeah, that's a really good one. Um, it has that pink pepper and aldehydic take on the original. I actually don't like the original Dior Ohm Sport or the original Dior Ohm Cologne very much. Not sure what it is about the iris that's mixed in with those, but... The Dior Homme Sport nowadays, the 2021, has those that pink pepper, the aldehydes. It's a really, really nice, fresh fragrance with a little bit of class and spice to it. Um, anyway, so these are the fragrances I'm going to be going over, and then I'll get back to the chat. So I'm going to do a little bit of a recap of this. Azaro's The Most Wanted Eau de Toilette Intense, my brand new fragrance. 
I'm not going to talk about this anymore, um, but that is my scent of the day. You'll see a video popping up for that soon. We have, um, that's not part of it. <laughs> I put that accidentally. It's Torino 21. Um, Creed Spice and Woods. We have um, the original Dear Ohm OG Silver. It's the original Dear Ohm. We have, which I have never smelled. We have, this is from Newt. Uh, this is a um, mystery fragrance. He just puts a bunch of, we do it back and forth with my moderators. Um, we do a bunch of mystery fragrances. And so this is a mystery. And from what I heard, it is not a brand that I've ever heard of. So it'll be really interesting. I said the, the fluid color looks really interesting. So yeah, we'll get into that. We also have Royal Oud by Creed. We have um, Soma Parfums Halcyon, which some of these I've already tried, just an FYI. And then these two are from Mo. I just spoke with him, and I missed them from the live stream two weeks ago, so I'm going to do them this time. We have Perry Ellis M, and we have O de Rochas. So those will be mixed in there as well. But anyway, what's going on, Sandy? How you doing? Scent of the day is Mancera's Tonka Cola. So that fragrance to me... Um, it was not like a huge superstar that I thought it was going to be. When I heard Tonka Cola, I was thinking heavy Tonka, heavy Coke vibes. But honestly, it wasn't. It was more lemon than anything in the opening. It was almost like a lemony Coke in the opening. As it dried down, you get this cherry note that comes through that kind of reminds me of Low Midial Eau de Parfum, um, which you guys know I'm not a huge fan of the Low Midial Eau de Parfum. It's my least favorite in that line. And so with Mancera's Tonka Cola, I like the fragrance. It's just it was never a love for me, which is why I didn't buy a bottle. Uh, Jafar, no boss bottle triumph of elixir. So that is actually, hold on. Uh, well, it's up there. I was going to say I'd check the tracking, but it was in Pittsburgh, which is where I live. It was in Pittsburgh this morning. So I'm guessing by tomorrow I'll have it, but no, none for this live stream, no. Um, GN Tonic is arriving Thursday. Oh, John Carlo, you bought it. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good fragrance. If you like the, that Lacoste Blanc Eau Intense, Lacoste Blanc Eau Fraiche, um, Bohemian Lime, because there is a nice lime note up top, uh, a slight boozy tone, a little bit of green, a little bit of spice, but it's a fresh, clean, um, kind of like slightly sharp, but has a nice crisp feeling to it. It's a really good fragrance. Um, scent of the day is plum and cognac. Nice, Austin. That's a really good fragrance as well. Very simplistic, but very well done. Um, dude, oh, welcome to Moe's. What's up, Moe? Uh, props on 8,000. So, yeah, I appreciate it. So, we hit 8,000 about a week ago. We're at almost 8,200 now. Um, so we are going to be doing a giveaway for the U.S. subscribers, unfortunately. Sorry, Sandy. Um, but there is two bottles, full bottles of Dua that I'm going to be giving away. So just stay tuned for that. I actually just forgot. I almost forgot about that before I started the video. Um, Tonka Cola dries down to smell similar to Dior Ombre Nuit. Well, I've never smelled Dior Ombre Nuit, but whenever it dries down on me, the Tonka Cola at least, it smells not exactly, but it has a very large similarity to the Con Tonka Cherry mixture that I get from Low Midial Eau de Parfum. That's what it reminds me, and I know a lot of other people have said that, but a lot of other people have said, I don't get that from it, so it might just be one of those skin chemistry fragrances, but for me, the dry down smells a lot like Lone Mediol Eau de Parfum. Um, buh -buh. Tom Ford's Ombre Leather Eau de Parfum or Parfum. The Parfum is the best in the line. Uh, usually, you'll find that with a lot of fragrances, especially in the higher end brands, the Parfums are usually the best one. Uh, that one's the smoothest. It has a little bit more of the richness to it. Uh, I would say the Ombre Leather Parfum is the best. It's not the best projecting in the line, but it is the longest lasting in the line and the best smelling. While all three of them smell very similar, the Parfum is the best. Um, I, I, I very much like Versace Eras Parfum. What are your thoughts? No need to buy uh, EDT or EDP. Okay, so I would not be the right person to ask about that, G-Law, because I have never, and I can repeat this, I have never in a million years liked any of the Versace Eros fragrances. I don't hate them. I have just, I, I've never seen it. To me, it smells like almost like a powdery old gentleman, um, and I've never 
that was that was kind of what started me on not liking powdery fragrances. I really have never liked the Versace Eros, the EDT, the EDP, or the Parfum. I've liked the Eros Flame. Um, I have that. It's the only one I have, and it's back there. Um, it's the one that has the blood orange in it. That's the one that my daughter bought me for my birthday last year, and it's now discontinued from what I understand. And that's the only one because it strays far enough away from the line and it's not as powdery. But the all the other Versace Eroses, the Eros EDT, EDP, and Parfum. While I do have to say, I, I would say that the EDP is probably the best of the three, I'm not the person to ask. But yeah, that's just my opinion. If anybody wants to weigh in on it, go ahead. It's just I've never been a fan of Versace Eros. Hey, John Carlo with the $5 super sticker. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Very nice. All of these super chats, super stickers, PayPal's, whatever you guys ever send, it goes straight back into the channel. And I know some people say that and they don't do that, but I've always put everything back into the channel to the point where I sometimes go broke. So um, definitely believe me when that happens. So thank you, John Carlo. I really appreciate you, buddy. Um, Clinton, oh, I have a bottle of Aaron Terrence Blue Fever arriving tomorrow. I haven't heard of that one. Is it new? Um, Clinton said rating for the new Azara 1 out of 10. So I'll get back into the chat in a second. Let's just talk about this. So this is a fragrance that I can tell you. It will not be one that you're going to spray on and immediately go, wow, I love that fragrance. It took The first time I wore it, I was kind of like, that's like a 7. It was very average, very just basic for me. But I thought maybe it was just me that was getting this weird tone. I was getting this almost absinthe tone from that moss liquor that you get in the dry down. Um, it was very odd. But then later in the day, I watched Jensen's video. And I usually don't watch videos at all, like never. But somebody sent it to me and said, are you sure that it's this bad, blah, 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 blah. And so I checked it out, and at the end of the video, he said he hated it or disliked it when he first tried it, and then it just got better and better. So I decided to take a full wear of it, and whenever I fully wore it, it was completely different. It was absolutely just one of the better Zaro fragrances in the line. While is this still something that is you need to pick it up, you need to blind buy it like the most wanted Eau de Parfum is? No. This is probably the third or fourth best in the line. I still say that the Eau de Parfum Intense is the best, then the Wanted by Night, and then probably Most Wanted Parfum, and then this. But as far as the fresh fragrances in the entire Wanted line, this is probably the best one. Um, it has a little bit, when you get to the dry down, it has a little bit of the toffee, almost like a toffee-like sweetness that you get from the Eau de Parfum. While this is a fresh fragrance at its core, when you first spray it on, it is... A nice green, almost minty. So I, I don't know if it's mint. And I'll tell you this probably for the rest of my life of wearing this fragrance. I'm. This is the only time I've ever smelled something that smells like mint. But I'm not sure if it's mint. And you guys, once you smell it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a green, minty-like tone in the opening. That has a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spice. And then as you get um, about two to three minutes into the fragrance, you get a nice crisp bergamot that comes in. Almost has like a, uh, like a YSL myself style smell with a green tone underneath it. As you get a little bit further into the fragrance, it starts to get to the like 45 to 50 minute mark. That is where this fragrance is probably the best that it will ever get. And I can tell you, when it gets to the dry down, it is unbelievably good. If the whole, what's up, Jace? How you doing, man? That's, that's, my, that's my nephew in the chat. What's going on, buddy? Um, did your, did your mom tell you I'm sending those this week? Cause I didn't have any decans, but, um, anyway, so whenever you get this fragrance, once you get to the 45 minute mark, if that entire dry down stayed in the opening all the way through, it would be one of the best fragrances out there. But the dry down for this, it has a nice, almost sweet, slightly green, spicy, woody, uh, woodiness. It's really, really nice. And, uh, so wait, I would always say to anybody, don't just spray this on in a May season and go, no, I don't like that. This is one of those fragrances you have to spray on and give a few full wears before you actually make your decision. Because again, I started out with it like basic seven, and now I would probably say it's like an eight to an eight two for me. It's a pretty good fragrance. 
Um, but anyway, um, what's up, Jonathan Madsen? How you doing, man? Uh, scent of the day is Polo Sport, the original. Man, I haven't worn that since like 1997. That's a good fragrance, though. I have Polo Sport Fresh. It's like one of the best gym fragrances out there. Alex, what's going on, man? Thank you for 8,000 subscribers. I appreciate you, man. And I do have a TikTok channel, Jace. Uh, it's under the same name, Fragrance Dude. Has for, that's where I started. I have 14,000 subscribers over there, but I don't use it very much. I just re repost stuff that I post on here. Um, ordered, ordered Nitro White. Anyone try it? Never even heard of that, John Car Carlo. That, that's one of the ones that uh, Ross was just reviewing, the Nitro Red. Um, so I might want to try that Nitro Red, though. Yes, he Aaron Terrence Hughes has some new fragrances. Well, I might have to check those out because I know, Sandy, I know you really like those. Um, I'm infested with the nitros, but invested or infested in the nitros, but I'm so tired of all the clutter. Um, sadly, shock, shock, the Azara wanted line and the Armani Strong with you line just don't thrill me. Hey, I, I honestly, that's fine. I, I know a lot of people have certain tastes and some tastes just don't wow them. For me, the wanted by night is what got started me started into this fragrance journey. I had like. 15 fragrances when I got wanted by night and I got that in and that's what started the whole thing that in YSLY EDT uh, So I mean everybody has their thing and for me it was the Azaro most wanted line um, Well wanted line, but I don't like wanted I don't like wanted tonic like I don't hate them It's just I don't love them. It was the most wanted that really got me started on it and wanted by night um, To be honest JCB oh John Carlo. Okay, that's for John Carlo all right, so now we are at the bottom of the chat, so let's get this started. I'm going to start talking about the fragrances that I've already tried. The first one that I want to talk about is Soma Parfums Halcyon. There was, for the last six months, people were telling me I needed to try this fragrance out. They said that it's better than Angel Share. And that's something because Angel Share is my favorite fall and winter fragrance, like, that hands down, that's my favorite fragrance. And... One of my favorite fragrances for the fall and winter, I should say. This is really freaking good. But it's like $100 more than Angel Share. And Angel Share is better. In my opinion, Angel Share is better. And I spoke to a few people. So Newt, again, thank you to Newt. He's one of my moderators. He sent this to me. This smells really nice. It's almost like if you took Angel Share and you mix it together with the spices from Spice Bomb Infrared. It's a heavier, spicy, dosed version of Angel Share, almost with almost like a fruity apple smell. It's really nice. It has a little bit of like a woodiness that you don't get in Angel Share too, like a darker woods. And so this might be something that the people who don't like overly sickeningly sweet fragrances, but they like Angel Share, but they just wish it was a little bit less sweet. That's probably what you would want to go with Soma Halcyon. But again, it's like almost $400. And Angel Shares 200 or so. So I would say just go with Angel Share and like you, unless you like a little bit more of a spicy woods and less of the sweetness. Um, but I would still give this fragrance an 8.5 to an 8.9. It's up there with Angel Share. It's just I love Angel Share. And oop, <laughs> that was me. Sorry, I kicked the table. Um, but anyway, that's Soma Halcyon. I, I really enjoy the fragrance. It's just I won't buy a bottle for the fact that I like Angel Share better. And it's way too similar to even have that conversation. Anyway, um, the next one that I've already tried, and this one I've been wanting to try for a while. It is Creed's Royal Oud. <sighs> I did not expect to get what I got from this when I first smelled it. Because when you hear Royal Oud, what do you think? Um, yes, Sandy... Um, let me let me look it up. So, Soma Halcyon. Soma Halcyon, right now. Um, well, on Scent Split, you can get it for two hundred, so that's decent. I saw it for more expensive, so I guess that's around the same price, around two hundred. So I I was wrong. It's it's two hundred dollars. Somebody told me it was 300. I just kind of ran with that, but I guess I was wrong. But it's on oh it's it's sold out on Scent Split, but anyway. So, Creed's Royal Oud. Let me get back to the chat. Creed Royal Oud. 
All right. So Creed's Royal Oud. When you first get in Creed Royal Oud, what would you think? You would think you're going to get a heavy dose of Oud in it. That it's going to be probably a little bit funky, maybe? Because that is what... I know, I just saw that, that the UK price was 149 But this stuff, it smells like a... <laughs> I said this when I first smelled it. I said, it smells like a distinguished gentleman. It, it legit is nothing at all what I expected this to smell like. If you're under the age of 30, you're probably not going to want to wear it. But this smells like somebody who is a boss, <laughs> but and they, are, and they want everybody to know it. You're going to be walking around in a nice cashmere suit. But it's a lot fresher and cleaner than I had expected it to be. Again, I was going into this thinking it was going to be dark, oud, woody, spicy. And, and while it does still have some of those features, it's not as dark. It's a little bit more fresh and clean any season. It's a full bottle worthy creed. I mean, I don't say that very often. For me, I have, I mean, creeds you can get $200 plus somewhere like that. And I have four. I have Millisime uh, Mil oh, Mil Imperial. I have Creed's Virgin Island Water. I have Aventus Cologne. And I have, what's the other one? Aventus. And this is probably my second or third favorite in the entire Creed line. It has a little bit almost like of a sweetness to it as well. I don't even want to waste any more sprays because that stuff is so good. And until I get a bottle, I, I want to savor that decant. But I'm getting a bottle very, very soon. It was between that and Suspiro Vibrato. And I'm not sure which one I'm picking up next because both of them are perfect for the upcoming spring season. Because they're more of like a transitional season style fragrance. Um, but those are the top two on my list right now. And I got the GN Tonic because it was such a good price. And I got that in place of the other two. Uh, but I kind of wish I would have saved my money because even though I really like that fragrance, Creed's Royal Oud and Suspira Vibrato are just so heavy on my list right now. It's just I could not pass up that price for uh, for the GN Tonic. Is it GN Tonic or is it Gin and Tonic? And that's just the way that they're saying it. Like Gin and Tonic? Gin Tonic? I honestly have no idea. Um, with that said... So it says on Creed's website, it's oud, frankincense, and gaillac wood combined to form the base notes of the majestic eau de parfum with the lime galbanum. That's what's bringing the sweetness is the lime and the bergamot and a little bit of galbanum. Um, it's a fresh and citrus twist to the classic and uh, sophisticated scent with the top notes of pink pepper, lime, bergamot, and galbanum. Uh, heart notes of angelica seeds, cedar wood, cedar wood cardamom, and clove. That's what it is. I was trying to think of what it was. There's a spice in this that really comes through, and it's clove. The clove that comes through in this, you don't smell like almost like a natural clove in very many fragrances. In this one, in Creed's Royal Oud, it's not too spicy, but it's a nice little clove under, uh, like, like an undernote that is underneath that citrus and that woodiness. And it, it brings this almost like dark spiciness that still remains to be a fresh fragrance. Oh, and Oceania is also on my list. Anyway, so let me get back to the chat real quick. Um, John Carlo said, Cuba said nitro white is nitro red, but with vanilla. So I passed on the red. I haven't tried any of them. Are they clones? I saw Ross talking about it in a live stream one time. And so I kind of just skipped over it. Um, because I, if I'm going to try something, I don't want to have somebody else's opinion about it. Um, but yeah, Oceania. So if you guys didn't know, I mean, I know Sandy and Mo and all you guys already know, but every year I create a list whenever I'm testing out fragrances. Cause I get, I mean, I get decants like this sent to me all the time. And so when I'm testing through those decants, a lot of times some of those decants will just fall by the wayside because I'll forget I tried them cause I tried so many. So I like to write down in my notebook all of the fragrances that are definitely bottle worthy that I, or ones that I, or I'll have a list that says, um, keep trying it. Like I'm going to keep making sure that I'm, I know I want to see if that fragrance is bottle worthy. So there's two different levels. 
And then there's a level that you just throw it out the window. I don't want that at all. But I can tell you right now, my top four on my list are so Spear of Vibrato, Creed's Royal Oud, Roja Isola Blue, and Roja Oceania. But I have never tried Roja Oceania, so I have no idea what it smells like. Um, anyway, has anyone tried by Odemo? Anything by Odemo? I haven't heard of that, Sandy. Sorry. Uh, WBN and WP are my favorite of the line. Wanted by Night and Wanted Parfum. You mean Most Wanted Parfum, I'm guessing? WP, I'm guessing you mean W I mean MWP. Um, my favorite are Wanted by Night and Most Wanted Eau de Parfum Intense. Well, as far as fresh fragrances go, this is a great spring and fall fragrance. I mean, it's it's really nice. It has a nice green tone, so it is more for the uh, spring for sure. Royal Oud is 10 out of 10. It's really nice fragrance. I need to get a full bottle before I'll say it's a 10 out of 10. Right now, for me, I'd say it's an 8.5 to a 9, somewhere in that range, but I can't give something that I only have a decan of a 10 out of 10 yet. And I've never given anything on my channel a 10 out of 10. So it has to be something super special. The highest ones, we were actually talking about this earlier. It's funny that you say that. Um, we were talking about the fragrances that I gave a 9.5. And I think there's eight. And all of those fragrances outside of those, there's a few nines, but everything else was like an 8.5 or lower. But I've never given anything a 10. Uh, Royal Oud was my first Creed. I love it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, thank you, Patrick is life. Appreciate it. Grats on 8K War, the most wanted part from 30 degree morning. Oh, um, speaking of today, you guys know that there was the solar eclipse. Well, I live right outside of Pittsburgh and I thought we were in the, that line where you could see the solar eclipse and it would be night outside. And cause it did show that it was coming through Pennsylvania. It's just... We're 60 miles east or 30 miles east of where that line was. So we saw it with like a 2% part of the sun and it still wasn't dark. I mean, <laughs> you would think that with 98% of the sun covered that that 2% wouldn't be that much. But man, it was light out. I mean, I was trying to take a video of it and I was like, um, hey, Lynn, my daughter, I was like, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> I mean, she's like, nope, I think we read it wrong. What's going on, Scott? How you doing, man? Thank you for the congratulations. I appreciate it. Did you order Roja Oceanian? And no, I have not. That's on my list to order. And I have a bunch of affiliate money right now for Venba. I'm just debating on what I need to pick up. And I'm also waiting because he does do sales every once in a while, even though his uh, website is like a sale. I'm kind of waiting to see um, when those prices drop a little bit. Even though they're already dropped, I know I'm being cheap, but... I've bought like $900 worth of fragrances in the last week, so you got to give me a break. <laughs> um, Royal Oud and Silver Mountain Water are my favorite from Creed. Silver Mountain Water is nice. I just wouldn't put it in my top five. I don't own a bottle of it personally, and I wouldn't wear it as enough to own a bottle, but I, I do understand why you would like that. Thank you, Newt. What's going on? That is Newt in the chat, one of my moderators. He's the one who sent me the decants. Also, Moe's in the chat, and he sent me two of the decants we're going over. Dude, the nitro seemed to be twist or inspired by... Oh, yeah. So, apparently, we're not allowed to say clones anymore. So, uh, inspired by. Uh, fruitier version of Invictus and Invictus Aqua. Speaking of Invictus, if you guys didn't already know, there's an Invictus Parfum that came out. That is one of the fragrances I told you I am going to be trying before I buy. Even though I want to say, if you go to Paco Rabanne's website, they have a deal right now where if you buy Invictus Parfum from their website, they will send a decant of it with the bottle that you can try first. And if you don't like it, you can just send the bottle back to them. I just don't feel like going through that because it'll be in stores soon. So I'm just going with that. And also... Invictus fragrances you can find on Joma Shop in like two months for like half the price. So out of all the fragrances I've already picked up, Invictus Parfum was not one I'm going to. Um, but I will test it out as soon as I can. And I also want to say, I know a lot of people were hating on Givenchy Gentleman Society Extreme. That stuff is freaking good. I don't care if it's redundant to the original because it is, but it isn't at the same time. It is miles better than the original. 
It is a lot more wearable than the original. My wife does not like the original, and she loves the extreme. The coffee note in it, while being subtle, stays for the almost the entire fragrance as a subtle coffee note underneath. And then all they did was take the original's DNA and smoothen it out and make it a little bit less powdery, mixed together with a little nice touch of coffee that smells like the coffee from Polo Red Extreme. Speaking of Polo Red Extreme, I forgot I had that and I'm going to wear it tonight. Um, but it smells like that. And Givenchy Gentleman Society Extreme, anybody who hated on that, you're wrong because that's that stuff is actually pretty damn good. That's one of the best releases of the year, and I was kind of hated on it because I, I hadn't tried it yet, but now that I tried it, but if there is a fragrance to hate on, it's the Burberry Hero Parfum for $185, and all that stuff smells is like a darker, worse version of the Eau de Parfum. Do you have a list of all your 9.5s? Uh, in my head, uh, I know most wanted Eau de Parfum Intense and Wanted by Night are 9.5s for me. They've always been, they always will be. Um, Angel Share is a 9.5. Um, Creed's Virgin Island Water is a 9.5. Um, what else is a 9.5? Um, uh, Imaginary Authors Saint Julep is a 9.5. Chanel's Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. YSLY Le Parfum. Um, uh, Parfums de Marley Herod. And there was a couple other ones. I did. Oh, uh, Tom Ford's Plum Japonet, even though that's discontinued. Uh, there was a couple other ones. I just can't remember. The, they, were, they were niche. I just can't remember what they are. What they are. Um, if I listed my 10 out of 10 fragrances, you would be shocked. Keep it in mind that I'm weird and eclectic. Hey, being weird and eclectic in a weird and eclectic niche like this isn't a bad thing, Giancarlo. Everybody's different, and that's what I like to hear. I like to hear. If you hate a fragrance that I that I love, I actually find that conversation a lot more like stipulating than or stimulating. I find I find that conversation a lot more stimulating than talking to somebody that loves the same fragrance that I love. If you hate it, I want to argue with you because I want to know why you hate the fragrance that I hate. And I want you to try to convince me that I also hate it <laughs> because sometimes it works. I don't know why, but sometimes when someone's trying to convince me that I hate it and this is the reason why they hate it, I'll go back and smell it. And for some reason, I will get the same thing that they got that time and it ruins the damn fragrance for me. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens like one out of every 50. But yeah. Uh, oh, and Lacoste Blanc Eau Fraiche. That is also a 9.5 out of 10 for me. I've loved that fragrance, and I don't care about the performance. It's like five hours, whatever. That stuff smells fantastic. It is legit. I mean, it is legitness. I can't do it that well. I'm trying to think. Is there anybody, any other fragrances that are in nine? No, not, not that I can think of right now. Um, 10K on the way. <laughs> We're almost there. I said we'll have it by summer, and so hopefully... Eros isn't on Randy's 9.5 list because it's a 10.5. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wandy. Uh, Carlo, I'm oh, talking to John Carlo. I like when you guys talk to each other. It's just it confuses me. I'll pick up Givenchy Gentleman Society Extreme at some stage. It does smell good. It's a really good smelling fragrance. So people were telling me it just smelled like crap. It's Someone said it smelled like olive juice. I'm like, what are you guys smelling? It smells good. It smells like Givenchy Gentleman Society but just better in every way with a little bit of coffee. It's what it smells like. Is it redundant to own both? Yes, because they're worn for the same situation. But the Extreme is so much better. I'm going to get the Extreme and probably sell the original. But I might keep the original because I could easily wear that to work, and I don't think I could wear the Extreme. Sin of the day is uh, OG Chanel Allure Ohm. It's a sleeper fragrance, criminally underrated, and it is in one of my videos of fragrances that are criminally underrated. Uh, no, my video is about fragrances that to wear during this weird time of year. Um, you know, like how when you're going from winter to spring and some days are like 20 degrees and other days are 80. Well, yeah, that, I, I did a video about that. And the original Allure Ohm is the best projecting one in the line. It's the longest lasting one in the line. Surprisingly, you would think the extreme is, but no. It's the cheapest one in the line, and it has peach, which it sets it itself apart from the line. So while that DNA is still there and all the rest of them, 
It has the peach note, which sets itself apart from all the other ones. So you wouldn't smell like any of the other ones in the line. So, yeah, I passed that one up for so damn long. I don't know why. I always thought it might be like fougere or something. But then I finally tried it like a year and a half ago. And I was like, wow, that stuff is good. Um, I'll tell you five of mine. Then go ahead, Jonathan. Um, love this hobby and the variety. Totally agree about arguing. Yeah, it's, it's the best thing. And if you're one of those people that like you hate the arguing or you're trying to create drama and arguing, I'm not talking to you because you're just a troll. I'm talking to the people who actually want to have a adult argument where we're arguing for the sake of fragrances and saying what we like and understanding other people's thoughts and opinions, which is like a human conversation. I mean, look it up in the dictionary, but I mean, seriously, that that's what this community is all about. Um, Oh, you guys want to hear something funny and then I'll get back to the fragrances. Um, so if you've been part of my channel for a while, you know that Chaos Fragrances blocked my channel like a long, long time ago. Um, this channel used to be my personal channel, but then I changed it to Fragrance Dude. Before I changed it to Fragrance Dude, I was following Chaos and I put on his, he posted one of his sales links and I said, hey, just an FYI, you can find this on Fragrance Buy for cheaper and he blocked me. Well, Three or four days ago, some, one of my subscribers said, Hey, Issy Miyake's uh, Lodissi Parfum, or whatever it was, is on uh, Chaos's channel for $70 or whatever, but you can find it on uh, Joma Shop for $59. Why is he posting the $69 one? And I said, Probably he has an affiliate to both. I said, Because the affiliate for the other one is higher. And so I went to my daughter's channel and I went and commented on his thing and I said, just an FYI, you can find it on Joma Shop at $59. And guess what? He blocked my daughter's channel. So, uh, yeah, just an FYI. He doesn't like when you try to say that the sales are better because he's just trying to sell to you. But whatever. I just thought that was funny. I figured I'd let you guys know. Dean Lee's Life. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to see Jonathan's list. Where is it? Uh, so five of my 10 out of 10s. Oh, so these are 10 out of 10s, not 9.5 out of 10s. Uh, Penhaligans, Eddie Mion. Haven't tried that. Argos Adonis Awakens. I don't like Rose, so I actually don't like that fragrance. Um, uh, Killian Apple Brandy on the Rocks. I gave that an 8.5. It is very nice fragrance if you like, like almost like a Washington apple shot in a, in a bottle to spray on yourself. Uh, I think that's really nice. OG Oud Wood, that's really good too. And Amouage Reflection. So we have different tastes across the board. I can tell you that. Outside of the Killian Apple Brandy on the rocks, um, the Oud Wood, I, I rated like an 8.5, so it's still a really good fragrance for me. But Amouage Reflection, uh, I, I can't do Amouage. Um, but that's, a, that's a, definitely a good list for you and for some of the people who really like those eclectic scents, like you said. Uh, what's up, D's Frags? How you doing? Um, Send of the day, day three fragrances. I've heard so many good things about day three fragrances. I just haven't tried them out yet. And it's Bonnie. And then Scent of the, uh, Scent of the Night, I'm guessing. Yeah, Scent of the Day Night. <laughs> you put Scent of the Day Night. Uh, Thomas Kosmala Neon. All mango today. So I guess the Bonnie is mango as well. I haven't tried either of those, but I like the note of mango. So maybe I would like that. Um, just shaking my head. Um, all right, so you're talking to Mo. Okay, so let's see what Giancarlo has. YSL Opium Vintage Version. A women's... Vin That's interesting. Because I know some people would put the uh, light blue... Oh, light blue intense is also on mine, but a lot of people would put the women's light blue intense on theirs because that one's really good as well. Uh, Jean Pateau pour un home. Guerlain Chalamar. Guerlain Mitsuk. Chanel Allure Homme Edition Blanche Eau de Parfum. That would be a 9.5 for me as well. And Grass, wow. You have uh, Virtus Vanilla Oud. Okay, so you got some fragrances I've never even heard of and I can't spell or say. I, and so uh, very eclectic list there as well. Are you planning on trying the new polo? So Nigel, I was planning on buying it the day that it came out. I had it in my cart. And legit, as it was in my cart, like I would have already reviewed it two weeks ago, but they caused somebody contacted me through TikTok, which I don't post on anymore, but 
the company found me because of my subscriber level over there. And they said, hey, we work with Ralph Lauren. Do you mind if we send you Polo 67? So I am just waiting for them to ship that out. So unfortunately, it's just a waiting game. Same with Scandal Absolute. I was going to buy that, but one of my subscribers um, said that he's going to send me Scandal Absolute. So I am waiting on those two bottles to be shipped to me. It's just they haven't shipped yet. So yes, I will. Um... That chaos channel is like a cult. Those people defend him in his links. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you like his links, that's fine. That's great. It's just you have to beware that whenever he posts a link, just go and check and see if the prices are cheaper anywhere else because he might be telling you about all these fragrances. Oh, and not only that, but he said that the Issy Miyake was also rare. You can find it on six different websites right now. That's not rare. And it's been on Joma Shop for the last three months. Um... But yeah, I, I do agree. Um, well, I didn't know about Chaos Fragrance. That's super shady. It, it, it's, I mean, he does post some good sales from what I've seen. I mean, and he lets you guys know of things that are coming. But it's, it's the fact that he doesn't post the cheapest sales all the time. Um, been thinking of picking up Kenzo EDT Intense. Any insight on that frag or anything Kenzo? So I just did a video on the Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum which is right there. Um, I got it whenever I was on my cruise last month, and I've tried out every other one online. I've tried out the EDT, EDT Intense, and the Marine. Um, as far as the ones in the line, the most eclectic, I guess we'll go back with eclectic again, is the Eau de Parfum. That is the best one in the line, in my opinion. It's almost like a dark blue marine fragrance. Um, it, it has like a freshness to it where you can almost wear it to like a beach and it's a fresh, but it's also dark and blue at the same time. Um, then you have the intense, which is my second favorite. Um, that one's a little bit more woody aromatic. Uh, that one is a nice fragrance. If you can find it for like 40 or $50 or less, I think it's a decent pickup. Then the next one is Kenzo Ohm Marine. That's just a basic, easy wear summer fragrance. I wouldn't pay any more than like $30 or $40. There's a lot of fragrances out there that do the same thing. And then the Eau de Toilette is just kind of meh. Uh, so I would say the only one's really worth a full bottle. If you're interested in eclectic fragrances, the Eau de Parfum, but it's not for everybody. And then the Eau de Toilette Intense uh, is the easiest to wear from the line, in my opinion. Outside of probably the Marine, because the Marine is just, like, really simplistic. Uh, Rainy's tastes are pretty easy. You pretty much dislike heavy florals or anything Oriental spicy or heavy Middle Eastern style of perfumery. You also... So, it's not always that, though. For instance, I don't want to knock anything over right here. This is one of my favorite fragrances. It is Tom Ford's... Soleil Neige. This is a heavy floral at its heart. And so this is a jasmine heavy, feminine leaning fragrance, especially in the opening. But there's something about it. And believe me, ask Mo. He's in the comments. As soon as I sent this to him, he was like, holy crap. Like the fragrance, it might be really feminine floral with the jasmine and all that in the opening. But it has this creamy, almost like high-end suntan lotion vibe to it. When you get to the dry down, the vanilla and sandalwood come in and it makes it super creamy. But it's not always that way. While I do dislike most florals, I don't dislike uh, sweet white floral. Like I, I like orange blossom. Sometimes I like jasmine. Uh, white florals aren't a huge deal for me. I, I would definitely say I hate rose. Um, but... Like, there's a lot of other flowers out there, florals, that I don't hate. Um, but when it comes to powdery fragrances, it has to be something special for me to really like it. Like Virtus Vanilla Oud. I like that, even though it's super powdery. Um, so, my tastes are simplistic. I've said that from the beginning, yes. Uh, my number one fragrance out there, fragrances out there, are sweet and gourmand fragrances. I really enjoy fruity fragrances, always have. I like anything with cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, any of those type of fragrances I like. Like, with it, when it comes to fruitiness, I like, like, apple, plum, all that kind of stuff. There's three big things that will really draw me away from a fragrance, and it's rose, not only because my wife is allergic to it, 
uh, rose oil, specific types of rose oil, but also because I've never liked the note of rose. Um, and then when it comes to powder fragrances, if it's overly powdery, I probably won't like it either. Um, those are the two things that I stay away from the most. Oriental spicy fragrances, that's not correct though, because uh, like Parfums de Marley Wajon, I like that fragrance. Um, there's a lot of Oriental spicy fragrances out there that I've really liked, but Middle Eastern fragrances, I do have to agree. When it's really dark, like Udi, stuff like that, yeah, I don't like that. But yeah, I mean, I'll admit my tastes are more designer um, than anything. They always have been. It's just what it is. Uh, I just got Pucker Bond's Golden Oud. This is one special and worth picking up before it gets discontinued. Uh, Pucker Bond's Golden Oud, I find it to be situational, but I do like the fragrance. Speaking of Middle Eastern style fragrances, um, even though that one is kind of on the designer end of Middle Eastern fragrances, I do like that fragrance. Uh, it doesn't really have any realm of the Paco Rabanne 1 million DNA, but Golden Nude is really nice. It's something that you have to wear if, like my wife doesn't like it, so I wouldn't be able to wear it around her, which is why I haven't bought a full bottle yet. Um, it's one of those kind of personal enjoyments. Since if you live in the United States, I can tell you, if you wear that out in public, people aren't going to think you smell amazing unless you live in like a city like New York or something like that. Um, because I haven't got very good compliments on that. I've actually had some people say that they didn't like the smell. Um, but I, I really do enjoy it. Uh, Randy, are you going to pick up Signature Bloom? Um, so I'm going to get a decant of that, Dan Not Demand, because uh, Ross even said I probably am not going to like that because it's mostly floral. But I am going to get the new, uh, the new Seraphim Blue. Um, that's coming out. We're talking about Zahara fragrances, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get Bloom, most likely, outside of a decamp, but I'm going to buy a full bottle of the Blue fragrance they're coming out with. And then he's coming out with his Privé line, which I'm really interested in as well. Um, should we, we should go half and half on a big bottle of Tom Ford's. John Carlo, if you were actually serious about that, I would 100% do that with you. I'm not even kidding. Tom Ford's Plum Japonate is worth it. It's just not worth the prices it's going for right now. Hey, Mo, killing the game. $5 super chat. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. John Carlo with the $5 and Mo with the $5. I appreciate you, buddy. One of the best moderators in the game. Same with you and Hamza, which was Hamza here before? Hold on. I thought I saw. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. So he was saying, what's going on, man? I saw your thing earlier, but then it skipped. But what's going on, Hamza? Sorry, man. I, I, I saw you for a second, but then. Um, I, I, it skipped down. Uh, I love Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc and Soleil Neige. Yeah, uh, Soleil Blanc is nice. Soleil Neige is just amazing. If you guys haven't tried out Soleil Neige, they sell it in almost every Sephora now. You should try that out and wait till it dries down. It is unbelievable. Yeah, that's what, that's what makes it fun, Randy. Everyone has those frags that are just, oh my God, uh, oh my God, that other may not, I, I can't read right now, that others may not care for. Uh, like me for Vanilla Oud and Dior Own Parfum, I just don't care for where so many others just love them. Yeah, I don't love Virtue's Vanilla Oud. I think it's nice. At first, I didn't like it at all. Dior Own Parfum, I prefer the Intense. I've always said that. Uh, Dior Own Parfum, there's something about it I don't like that much. And other people say that it's one of the best fragrances in the community. Hey, whatever. I mean, if you like it, you like it. Randy, are you in Pittsburgh? I'm out near Bridgeville. Love the con. Hey, <laughs> one of the guys, uh, Kenny, one of the guys that is actually in this chat who just started his channel scott um he's under central hub he's in bridgeville as well i am in south park so um 25 minutes away from you not even so yes i am in the south hills area um decent inspiration of pucker bonds gold nude is fragrance world nazi gold i've actually heard that i've heard that for sure uh we need to get more into this so Hold on, I have some other ones. So we have Creed Spice and Woods. This is the last one I've already tried. So I'm just gonna spray it on a piece of paper and tell you guys what I got from it. This is another one that I got from Newt. And again, Royal Oud is worth a full bottle. This is in kind of like the more expensive Creed line. That's why some of you guys may have not heard of Creed Spice and Wood. But I can tell you, it doesn't smell like Spice and Woods really. It smells like clean, fresh, soapy almost. And the fragrance smells really nice. It does have a little bit of spice in it. When you get to the dry down, a little bit of woodiness comes in.
but it's like a fresh, clean, almost fougere-ish style fragrance, but it's really a nice fragrance. It's just not worth 500 bucks. It's really nice. And I even said, if this was in the regular Creed price range, I would totally pick up a bottle. And everybody that I've talked to about it that has tried it, they agreed. They said, Creed Spice and Wood is like amazing, but amazing for the price if you're down like at the discounter level Creed prices. But even on discounter level for this, it's like $400. But it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. It's right in that realm of the Royal Oud where it's like a sophisticated gentleman, but it also has this nice, fresh, clean, natural vibe that you would get just like being clean out of the shower, but then with its own little twist. And it's super high quality. It's, it lasts on your skin forever. Creed Spice and Wood is really a nice fragrance. I mean, and it's really good. I would say that would be like a nine, like an 8.5 or a nine. But when you add in the $500 price range, that takes it down to like an eight for me. And would I pick up an eight for that price? No, I wouldn't. And so, yes, I factor in price when it's that expensive. And um, would I accept like a 10 milliliter decant if I could find it online? Yeah, I probably would. Create Spice and Wood is really nice. So if you ever get the chance to try that out, try it out. Um, we're going to move into this one. Actually, I've been really excited to try this. Um, Addition Blanche is a 9.5 for me, Jonathan. Um, it's one of my favorite fragrances. But anyway, this is, you guys probably can't see it. I don't have that like zoom thingy, but it is a mystery decant. I don't know what it is. And apparently I don't know what the brand is either, but we, we do this every once in a while. We're sending a mystery decant to people, uh, to each other. And so I'm going into this, not knowing any notes, not knowing the fragrance, not knowing the brand, not knowing anything. So Newt, are you here? Or Mo, are you here? Cause I know Mo knows what it is, but I need to make sure that once I'm going through this, you guys can at least tell me what it is or if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> That's nice. What is that, nutmeg? Oh. I actually really like that a lot. It's spicy and woody, and it kind of has this, like, heavy nutmeg smell to it. But it also has, like, almost like a fresh and clean vibe. It, it reminds me of, like, those, those creeds that I was just spraying. Um, wait. I'm going to spray that Creed on my other hand. Yeah, it's warm and spicy. Almost a little bit fruity. You know what this kind of reminds me of? There's a fragrance that I tried once. It's called Joe Malone's, uh, what was it? Like nutmeg and ginger or something like that. Kind of smells like that. Oh, nice warm spiciness. A little bit of a small. Can you tell me what this is now, Mo? Or Newt? Are you here? Can you tell me what it is? Because I, I won't be able to guess because I don't know the brand. But... Yeah, there's a decent amount of nutmeg, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, uh, warm, little bit of a woodiness underneath it. Skibbity toilet. <laughs> Jesus, I think I, I think Mo and Newt left, so I don't think I'm going to get the answer on what I'm even reviewing for you guys. So in the meantime, I'm going to let that dry down and I'm going to get to the original Allure Ohm. It's the original Olorum. It's the uh, the mystery decan is fire. Five o'clock. Oh, Jejambre Serge Lutens. That's what it is. Thank you, Hamzad. I didn't know you were still here. All right. So let me look that up. Five, so Oh, Jejambre. So ginger, ginger, and is there nutmeg in it? Because I I smell nutmeg, ginger, and woods. So let's see how close I am with that. Um, Oh, gingambre. Serge Lutens. Mm. 
Okay, five, Sergio Tens, 5 o'clock, Ode to Um, Is it on any site that would give me notes? Gee, 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 gee. Doesn't look like it's on any site that would actually give me notes. So let me go to the Serge Luten site and see what they say about it. All right, so it's 5 o'clock AU Jejambre, and it is olfactory notes. Ginger, bergamot, and spices. That doesn't help. So I told you there was a little bit of citrus in it too, so hey, at least I know that my nose isn't broken. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of the freshness. I said there's a little bit of freshness in it. It's a warm and spicy fragrance at its core, but it, there's a little bit of freshness in it. It's from that bergamot in the opening. It does. I, that's why I said it kind of came off like the Creed's, because the Creed's, they don't smell citrusy, but they have a freshness in there that is coming from the citrus that's not really coming through and saying, hey, I'm a citrus fragrance. Um, but, yeah, this is this is nice. It's, it's, it's really nice. This is a good one to send, Newt. I kind of wish he was here right now. But I'm glad that I have the other two guys, Hamzat and Mo, to be able to tell me what's going on. Yeah, it's for me, I get nutmeg. For me, nutmeg is the heaviest tone right now. Um, there, it's, it's almost a slight bit soapy from the ginger. But the ginger has more of a warmth to it that kind of comes off like the ginger you would get in... Um, that you can't see it past this thing, can you? Um, why can't I think? Goldfield and Banks and Genius Ginger. It has the ginger tone of that, but not like a ginger ale. It's not fizzy and effervescent. It's more warm ginger mixed together with a nice nutmeg, giving that spice to it, a little bit of a woodiness underneath it. And then on top of that, you get a little bit of a freshness that is almost dissipated by now um, from that bergamot but we're gonna wait till we get to the dry down and we're gonna go to this original allure ohm og silver okay i just wanted to make sure i didn't spray anything there okay there it is original allure ohm og silver there we go A lot of iris. Smells closer to like the Dior Homme Intense, Dior Homme Parfum. But a little bit fresher, not as warm. Doesn't have really that much ambrette in it that you get from those two. But it's very much on par with those two. So if you are interested in those two fragrances, back whenever they were more of the iris dominant, um... It's very smooth. I can see why people really like the original version of it. Yeah, a little slight bit woody, but it's iris forward. It's powdery, has that makeup lipsticky iris. Yeah, it's really good. Still not my cup of tea. Like, I wouldn't go buy in that original Allure Ohm DNA because I've never been a huge fan of like the Dior Ohm Parfums Heavy Iris, um, but I love Dior Ohm Intense. Um, this one, if it was still out there as like a full bottle for like a hundred bucks, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, right now, Peacekeeper, I am smelling um, the original. So I just did one that was a mystery fragrance that was sent to me. And it's by Serge Lutens. It's called Eau de Jambre, 5 o'clock or 5 o'clock Eau de Jambre. And it's great. It smells like nutmeg if you mix it together with some woods and ginger. Really nice. And then you have a little bit of a freshness up top with some bergamot. Then I sprayed on Dior Homme, the original, the silver edition, way back when, the original one. And it kind of smells in line with the other Dior Homes, the, the warmer ones like the Parfum and the Intense, but a little bit smoother. And a little bit more simplistic. It still has that make makeup y lip makeup lipsticky iris. Hey Ross, what's going on, man? Gin tonic is better than Randy said. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> I actually started that uh, th this entire thing off talking about that, saying that I, I I hated it when I first sprayed it on, but I think that it was something. I think there was some left in the straw or something because when I sprayed it on the second time, because I sprayed it once on my hand. 
And that's what I was going with because I had already sprayed fragrance on that day, today. And it just smelled funky. But then I sprayed it on again a little bit later and it was completely different. Like almost a completely different fragrance. And so I was like, I must have been like in the straw or I honestly don't know. I honestly have no idea. I can't explain it. Might have just been my nose because my allergies were acting up earlier. But excuses, excuses. Randy, you suck at fragrance. That's it. Um, but thank you very much, Ross, for the $10 donation. I really appreciate you. Um, and hopefully, again, the thing comes tomorrow. I will text you. I started, I started my live uh, when you were ending your live. So that's why I was just letting you know. I'll text you in the morning. Um, I'm waiting to my next payday to grab GN tonic. Very excited for it. It's $144 on Venba fragrance. Uh, if it's still available, he brings it back like every week when it, after it sells out. So just an FYI and the bottle is super sick. It's a super cool bottle. The original Allure Ohm is really nice. So what's the difference? So I know he said it's the original, like the original Allure Ohm. But why, he put OG silver? What was the difference? What's, is there like a silver and a gold? I honestly don't know. Can anybody tell me? Like, what's the difference between the silver and other additions? Does anybody, can anybody tell me that? Um, Serge Lutens and their names. Yeah, I know. It's, what, five o'clock, Au Jajambre, Au Jajambre. There is another fragrance I wanted to try called Eau de Jambre, um, but yeah. Patrick's Life. Hi, Randy. I love your takes, but do you tend to jump the gun on saying something smells off after a few sprays? And No, that's why. I, so I just give you what I smell. So that's why I do a first impression and then I do a full review the week later. I always do that or it's like seven to ten days. Because the first impressions are just based on the first spray. Spray it on my hand and I tell you right then what I get. If I dislike it, if I like it. And a few times I'll come back after a week and my opinion has drastically changed. For the most part, my opinions mostly stay the same. But the last day or so, it's been pretty bad. I can tell you. I don't know if it's allergies acting up or what, but both with this and with this. I started them off and it was just not very good right off the bat. So for the most part, that's why I do my full review afterwards because, I mean, you, you need to wear the fragrance because I'll be honest with you, no matter what fragrance you're getting, that first spray isn't going to tell you everything you need to know about the fragrance. But for some reason, I've asked you guys a hundred times, what kind of videos do you like? Everybody keeps telling me, keep doing the first impressions. And all that is, is the opening five minutes of the fragrance, and then I skip to like 35 minutes and do another five minutes of that. But you're only getting the opening hour. You're not getting a full dry down or anything. If you guys want me to keep doing it, I'm going to keep doing it. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to love the rest of the fragrance. And so, hey, that's why we do a full video, and I talk about it on my live streams. But anyway, um, smells off after a few sprays. In an hour, you have to go back and have to change your opinion. Um after only a few sprays in an hour and you have to later go back and have to change your opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's it, opinions change. I've never actually went into a fragrance and hated it, like hated it to the point where it was disgusting and then changed my mind to the point where I was like, I love that fragrance. I've never actually done that. I've never hated a fragrance and then loved it later. That's just never been, I've, I've maybe been in the middle, like seven to a seven, five. And I might be like, okay, my opinion's changed. Um, it has pepper and cinnamon, feels like nutmeg and candy ginger, as well as honey teen woods. Oh, yeah, that's a good fragrance. It has a little bit of a powdery tone underneath it too. Um, ba 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 ba. I have to agree, Ross. Welcome. Um, I'm waiting for my next payday to grab my GN tonic. Very excited for it. Oh, I, I, I'm going backwards. Serge Lutens, Coche de Diable. Another one of my 10 out of 10s. You got a lot of 10 out of 10s, Giancarlo. 
Thank you, Ross. Appreciate it. Um, try Lone Midial Eau de Parfum and the Garner Compliments already, even though I can't smell it much. Lone Midial Eau de Parfum is my least favorite from the line. My favorite from the line is either the Extreme or the Lintense. My favorite fresh one, one from the line would have been the Cologne, but that's discontinued, so it's going to be Platine Purvé, um, which... Then you have the OG, which is the most wearable in the line. But the Eau de Parfum comes off a bit feminine on my skin. I've never liked that darker cherry. Um, so, I mean, I still, every one of the low midi alls are very nice, very good. Um, but I still like that, that incense freshness that you get with the Lintense. I still like that plum and ta tonka bean that you get with, and the tobacco that you get with the um, Extreme. But yeah, they're, those ones are really good. The Eau de Parfum... Never really did anything for me. My wife doesn't like it, so I, I still have a bottle. If anybody ever wants to buy it, you can, but yeah. I almost had Hamptons, uh, worst of the SMW. What's Hamptons? And what's SMW? <laughs> Sorry, Peacekeeper. I'm not sure what Hamptons or S. Are you talking about bond number nine, Hampton? Is that even something? And then what's SMW? Sorry, if you if you could want to repeat that, I'll be able to read it. It's just I'm not 100% sure what that means. As being someone with stuffy sinus problems, it sucks being a hobbyist. Allergies can throw off your smell. Well, the thing is, is that it was snowing like three days ago, like almost snowing. And now it was like almost 75 degrees today. Um, oh, Silver Mountain Water in, in Bond Number 9 Hamptons. Okay, so I was um, kind of confused. All right, so let me reread that. Also, I tried Hampton, so bond number nine Hamptons. Worst of the Silver Mountain water-like frags. Okay, now I understand what you're saying. I like Rosasi's the most. Um, yeah, Silver Mountain water, I, I think I was talking about that earlier in the stream. Um, and when we were in Ross's live, I was talking about my favorite creeds too. Silver Mountain water doesn't do much for me. Uh, even all of the fragrances that are alike it, you can find fragrances under $50 that, was, that are in the same realm as silver mountain water so i just would rather go with those um because that style of dna is nice it's just to me i don't feel like i need to buy silver mountain water for that i would rather have all of the other creeds that i own um best summer non-aquatic fragrances um well it depends on what kind you're talking about um we have easy answers like dolce and gabbana's light blue O intense um Wait, so best summer, what was it, non-what? Non-aquatic frags. Well, I guess that's still been like marine. Um, yeah, so that's not aquatic, though, because you, when you think about aquatics, you think about fishiness, and at least in my head when I think of aquatics, like watery aquatics. Um, so I would say, like, for me, the best summer fragrances, like um, Louis Vuitton's Afternoon Swim is a really nice one. You have... Rhonda Ross is in the chat right now, but his business over pleasure is getting so many wares out of me for the last spring and summer since I had it. So that's going to be one of my top ones, along with Sahara Citrine. Really like those fragrances. Um, Non-aquatics, you can also go with um, uh, business over pleasure for the win. Absolutely. Um, like I said, low midi all cologne, low midi all platine purvé, uh, light blue, O oh, intense, or the new summer vibes is a really good one. Um, uh, you could go with why any of the cologne fragrances, do your own cologne, why sell why oh fresh, which I think is super freaking underrated with all of the cologne fragrances out there. That one does not get talked about enough. And the juniper berry in that fragrance mixed together with that lemonade style. It's almost like a juniper berry lemonade. And I love that fragrance. It's great. Um, and that's not aquatic. And then you could do another easy answer like Chanel's Allure Homme Sporto Extreme where you can wear that in any season. Or if you want to go with a cheapie, well, while I'm down here, I might as well grab this too. Uh, cheapie. This one's good. CK1 Summer Days. It, it's this kumquat. And it's like a kumquat. It's almost like an orange heavy fragrance that has a nice like fizzy effervescence to it. And it's very simplistic and it only lasts two hours, but it's really freaking good. Uh, also, you have Virgin Island Water if you want to go down that route. Or this one. This was the other one I was grabbing while I was down there. Terre d'Hermes Eau Gevre. This one is that rinded Citron. It's pretty much everything. Oh, I don't want to say that. I'm not saying it, Ross. Okay, no, I'm not saying that. Um, 
Terra de Ochevre has a nice rounded citron in it. Then it has that Terra de uh, DNA, which I've never liked, but that is the best one in the line. And it is super mass appealing. It is great in the heat. So, yeah. Um, there's also one that is super underrated by Mancera called Aqua Wood that I like for the spring and the summer. And Lemon Line is also really nice. Uh, Sicily. Um, and But... Aqua Wood is a very nice fragrance that you can wear during the spring or the summer as well. Sorry, I went way too far into that. I gave you like 30. Um, so anyway, so far today, we have talked about that Surge of Tens fragrance. We have talked about Creed's Royal Oud, which is one of the best Creed fragrances. We have tried one of the premium Creed fragrances, Creed Spice and Wood, which is amazing. It's like a nine, but it's like $500, so I won't buy it. Um, we've tried the original... Uh, Dior Ohm, OG, Silver, and we've tried that other one that I was, whatever it was, I can't remember. Um, and then we talked about this. So now we're about to get into the giveaways. Don't worry if you guys want, uh, for the 8,000 subscriber giveaway, we got two duos. And these necessarily won't be the two because I have like 10 duo bottles that one of my subscribers sent me to give away to you guys. And these can be two of them. Um, but we're going to do the giveaway in just a second. We have these two fragrances to get through. The first one is Perry Ellis M. Thank you to Mo for sending this to me. I'll get back to the chat in just a second. Perry Ellis M. Is this the one that you were talking about, Mo? If you're still here, Mo. Is this the one that you were talking about with the Chanel Allure Ohm? Because I can kind of see where you're coming from. It has a, like a sharp bergamot off the opening. With a little bit of a unique spiciness that I'm not used to. I'm not quite sure what it is. But it's fresh. It's clean. It does have this vanillic fresh. A uh, vanillic freshness. That you do get from the Allure Ohm. But it has almost like a little bit of a green edge to it. Oh, there's some cinnamon coming out. Yeah, I like this. How much is this, Mo? This is nice. There's some cinnamon coming out in it. There's a little bit of a unique spiciness. that is, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I've smelled it before, but it's underneath. And then it has a little bit of this freshness up top from the, um, from the bergamot, but not like overly fresh. And it's already starting to dry down. And it is getting closer to a, the Allure Ohm DNA, but it also has a kind of vibe of Triumph of Bacchus. Just a vibe. Like, you know, that sweetness and a little bit of that fruitiness, like the peach and stuff that you get from that. It has a little bit of a vibe from that, but I can totally see what you're talking about because there's a little bit of a cinnamon spice and almost like a woodiness um, that comes through and mixes together. And it kind of does have a vibe of like a fall version, like I think that's what you were saying, a fall version of Allure Ohm um, in the original. I would say it's more of like the Allure Ohm original, um, like a fall version of that. That's, that's good. That's really good. For the price that you guys are saying, you're saying it's like a rack store, that's really good. I have two other Perry Ellis's, and so far both of those were really good. But they smelled too close to other fragrances, while this one smells inspired it does do its own thing. Yeah, the vanilla's creeping in a little bit more, at least like some kind of vanillic feeling. Oh. oh. That's nice. Let's see what the notes are for it. So this is Perry Ellis M. Okay, so the top notes are star. That's probably what it, I, that, that weird... Uh, spiciness that I was getting is star anise. Um, then we have bergamot. Mid notes are cinnamon, balsam fir. Okay, that's the woodiness probably. A little bit of a green tinge, balsam fir. Um, sage, vanilla, tonka, and cashmere. Okay, cashmere wood. Yeah, definitely cashmere wood. I love cashmere wood. That's one of my favorite fragrance notes. Uh, vanilla, tonka, cashmere wood, white musk, and vetiver. This does good. It still has those synthetics in it. I mean, obviously, but 
very well masked, and it's very nice fragrance. I would give this like an eight, like a very decent Periellas for sure. I obviously have to wait till that dries down and wear it before I can give you a like an honest review on that. But based on off the test strip, it smells really nice. Um, hey, Randy, what do you think about YSLY EDP Intense versus a regular EDP in Le Parfum? So my favorite in the line is Le Parfum. I think that is the best one in the line. I think it will always be the best one in the line. I don't think they can top a 9.5. That's my favorite in the line. Um, my second favorite is YSLY Live. Uh, the EDP, while it smells great and it was the first one I ever owned from the line, it gives me a headache, so I can't wear it. it. smells great, and it's one of the biggest compliment getters out there, but it gives me a headache. The EDT Intense, I think any of the Ys smell nice. Uh, they all have that Y DNA, which is one of the most mass appealing DNAs in any fragrance line. The Y EDP Intense, to me, was the most boring, if you want to put it that, that, that way. It was kind of just, it has a really good opening. The opening kind of reminded me of YSLY Live, where it has a little bit of this fruitiness. So the first like 10 minutes is really nice. Once it starts to dry, it smells like a woody, aromatic base version of the line. And that's not a bad thing. It's just simplistic. And if I compare it to the rest of the line, I like the rest of the line better. The EDT is the one that I wear for almost any situation, getting out of the shower, going to the gym. The EDP, I can't wear because I get a headache. The Le Parfum is the best night out blue fragrance in existence, in my opinion. Um, the Even the new La Elixir is kind of like a soapy, clean, grown-up adult. Like, that's really nice fragrance. And then you have the Eau Fraiche, which is your summer juniper berry cologne-like fragrance. Really nice. And the EDT inten EDP Intense fits right in the line. Um, but is it anything special? Make up your mind, because I know a lot of people like that scent. I know a lot of people love it. So make up your mind. Go try them all out. But I wouldn't blind buy that one when you have the other ones. I would say the Le Parfum is the best one. Light blue Italian love, I don't like. <laughs> Never liked Italian love. I think it smells like gym socks. Um, uh, Forever is nice, though. I like Forever. Forever was nice. It's just when Italian love came out, that citrus mixed together with that grapefruit just kind of just well grapefruit citrus but the rinded grapefruit it was just mixed together and it came off like a like a hockey bag to me <laughs> it's what yeah, any light blue flanker would work light blue sun's actually kind of nice i just tried that out recently uh paco rabon golden oud is honestly amazing and wait till it gets discontinued um and wait when it gets discontinued will be highly sought after i don't think it's going to be super highly sought after because like one million lucky was discontinued, uh, discontinued and it's still been out for like a year. Um, and apparently they undiscontinued it and then they re discontinued it. I don't even know the story with that fragrance anymore. Um, 1 million Privé was gone. And then like after a year of people complaining about it, they, it, it was like the best in the line and then people kind of forgot about it. Um, so I don't think it's going to be super sought after, especially because I still think the other ones were more popular. YSL Loam is one of the best for summer. I, I, Loam is just a super easy wear. Uh, yeah, super easy wear fragrance. I've always liked Loam. Can't, can't complain with that. I can complain about the performance, but I also don't care about performance. Peace Key. Oh, uh, Chopper, Chopard, Happy Lemon Dolce. Oh, you guys are still talking about that. Let me, I'm a little bit far behind. Sorry. Good evening, Randy and everyone. What's up, Sun Devil? Was cooking dinner for the kids and, my, and myself. Scent of the day is Salvatore Ferragamo Urban Field. That's actually a nice fragrance. I saw that at my uh, um, Marshalls last week, two weeks ago. But yeah, it's nice. Perry LSM is super underrated. I totally agree. And I added super in there. I don't know why. I was reading it and I added a word. Never tried any of the Perry Ellis. Are they rack store finds? Yeah, I found them mostly are at Burlington. Um, but some people find them at Marshall's. I know Perry Ellis Red, or I think that's what it's called. It looks like a giant dildo with a circle on top. Um, it smells like Aqua de Joe. So if you, if you like Aqua de Joe, it kind of smells like that. Uh, it was like Aqua de Joe Ascenza, maybe. I can't remember. I haven't worn it in a while. Um, why EDP Intense is m like a more mature version of the EDP, more herbal, aromatic, lavender, sage focused. Yeah, it's, it's a woody, aromatic take on the line. That's the easiest way to put it with a fruity-ish opening. 
Um, what's up? Sing of the day is Black Rose. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? Black Rose is the one. That's the that's the Zer, uh, Zaharoff, right? That's George's fragrance. I would buy it, but again, Rose, I cannot wear. Um, and I do have a decan of it that I haven't reviewed yet. One of my subscribers sent it to me. Um, Ryan hitting heavy tonight with the Halfetti. Halfetti Cedar and Halfetti Leather, those are both really good fragrances. Halfetti Cedar might be one of my favorite fragrances I tried last year. YSL is the designer goat. I completely agree. What's going on, Mike? If you guys haven't followed Fragrance Fraternity, go over and check him out, as well as anybody else who popped in, like Ross and Scott and any of those. Has anyone ever tried light blue swimming in Lapari Flame? I thought people were joking when they wrote that last week, but no, I have not tried it, but they had some weird ass light blue names back in the day, like light blue swimming in Lapari Lake or whatever it was called. Yeah, um, it's very light. I heard it wasn't very good. I heard it was the worst one that they've ever released. Um, I put a dab of rose on top too. Yep. All right, so we're getting into the last one, and then we're going to call it an evening because we're at 80 minutes already. Shit. This is Eau de Rochas. I don't know who makes this. I would say Rochas, but I'm pretty sure that's not correct. Wow, that's nice. Kind of like a lemon cleaner, but like without the cleaner. <laughs> so lemon. But... <laughs> It has the lemon cleaner vibe, but without the lemon cleaner vibe. <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. You guys are probably just staring at the phone like, what is this fucking idiot laughing at? It has a really nice citrusy opening. Let's just put it that way. Is it Rochas? Oda Rochas? Well, really unique as far as the name. And I was joking. Yeah, this has a little bit of a herbaceousness underneath it, but it smells like a lemon head. Thank you, Mo. It smells like a lemon head. I was trying to think. It's, it's so it, it has, you know how lemon heads have that lemon smell that almost reminds you of a lemon cleaner, but it doesn't? That's what this does. It's like a candy-ish lemon, like a sugared lemon. Oh, it smells like a lemon drop without the alcohol. Oh, this is good, man. It has a little bit of an herbace herbaceous tone underneath it, though. I don't know. I like this. Giancarlo, I, I see you put the vintage Oda Rochas was better. I need to get a bottle of this. I need, to, I, need to get, I need to remind myself. I need to look up the price for it first. Oda Rochas. It's Rochas, so it's probably like $20. $40, $30. $32. All right. That is a done deal. I just added it to the cart. Hold on. Let me get a PayPal so I don't forget. It's getting a little green. For some reason, YouTube... For some reason, YouTube said your connection is inactive. So can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? It's getting a little green. Well, wow, it's way behind. For some reason, YouTube. All right. So I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. All right, you can see me. You can hear me. I guess YouTube is having some kind of issue because there was like a 15-second delay. Like right now, I'm showing you my phone, but I probably won't see it on my phone for like another 15 to 20 seconds. But... Um, anyway, so the Eau de Rochas, it has that lemon verbena in it, which I tried a fragrance with lemon verbena in it last week. And it was a nice, slightly green take on the lemon. Mix that together with the lemon and the lime and you get this kind of like sugary lime lemon mixture on top with a little bit of an herbaceous feel underneath it. I gotta tell you, I mean, this fragrance got a 3.93, which I guess is fair. Because it's nothing that's like wowing, but as far as a nice summer staple, this is nice. It could, this could even be worn during the spring because of the green tones. And then you get coriander, patchouli, carnation, narcissus, jasmine, wild rose, oak moss, vetiver, musk, sandalwood, and amber. So I'd be interested to see what the dry down smells like because 
I just bought it, and it might be too floral. <laughs> oh, well. That happens. Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, we got to do the giveaway. Uh, thank you, dude. Puppet Master. I like that name. Thank you, dude. I bought gin and tonic because of you. You're welcome, man. I appreciate you purchasing it. Hopefully, you use my link. If you didn't, it's okay, though. Um, your voice is on delay. Shit. Really? Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, we got to do the giveaway. It's, uh, it's not on delay for me, master. so. I like that name. All right, we're going to do the giveaway. Have you smelled Roshas Intense? Is that the big purple bottle? I have not, but it is in my cart on News Parfums. Whenever I make my big purchase, I'm once I get my decan of Scandal Absolute, if I like that, I'm making my big purchase with the YSLY Elixir and all that on uh, News Parfums, and the Roshas Intense is actually in the cart ready for that. That's the one that was released last year. Uh, with that said, we are going to be doing a giveaway. And again, if you're new to the channel, um, this is all we do. Uh, we're doing two bottles of Dua. Uh, I'll just give you these two. Um, it's called Cure de Russi. And the other one is Beliefs Extrait de Parfum. And we're doing those giveaways. Anybody can enter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up wheelofnames.com. And then you guys are going to write your name in the chat and just give me one second. I have to delete all the rest of the stuff from last time. And then what I'll do is I'm not going to be home for like the next two to three days. Um, but after that, I will ship your item out. Um, so anyway, if you want to be entered into the giveaway, uh, I will do the announcement right away on the live. All you have to write in the chat is I'm in. So just do that now, right? If you're, if you're interested in the giveaway, write I'm in, in the chat. All right. We got Jonathan, Dan, Brian, Ryan, John, Carlo, Brian, Ryan, John, Carlo, Brian, Ryan, John, Carlo. Mac, fantastic, Mike, Mac, fantastic. I'm going to put you on your frag fraternity, just in case we get another mic. And Jay Nesh and Puppet. The only stipulation is that you have to be subscribed to the channel. All right. So, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So, now we're going to do the Wheel of Names spin. It's 100% legit because you get to see it on the screen. Just make sure you guys will see your names, and then now we're going to do it. The winner is Dan. Uh, yep, Dan is the winner. So Dan, not the man. You can either Instagram message me at FragranceDude, or you can email me at FragranceDude at gmail.com. And congratulations, you have won two duas. If you have either of those that I just named, then I can give you uh, a list of the duas that that guy said that um, my subscriber sent me, and then I will send them, uh, send you the list, and you can pick two. Um, but yeah, um, that is that's it. Congratulations to Dan. Uh, so, if you guys have any other questions, post them down now because I'm gonna head out and go for my run in a second. Because, uh, man, do I need to run. Even though I run every single day, I eat just as much, so it kind of counteracts that. Anyway, um, this is what we're doing for my 8,000, 9,000, and 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Obviously, the 10,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be four bottles, not eight, four. Going to be four bottles. Um, but the duos are the next ones, and then after that, you're going to have the choice uh, for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. It's going to be 
either four Dua bottles or it's going to be a niche fragrance, depending on which one you want to choose. So anyway, uh, there is a possibility of a live stream with Ross and Dedrick tomorrow on Ross's channel, possibly. I can't guarantee it. It all depends on if our package gets here. So if not, then it'll be sometime down the road. Um, so I'll let you guys know in the community tab. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. But if not, it was great talking to you guys. I hope that you had a fantastic weekend. I hope that your week goes quick. And I will see you on the next one. So thank you guys so much. Remember, if you are coming in and you're watching this on the replay, I appreciate you guys as well. Make sure to like and comment. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.